Hi, who are we talking to? Jorge Rivero of Sordes. Now, you've been in the business for so many years. You are like the Robert Redford of Latino film. Now, I'm just quoting other people. I, I, I'm not describing, I'm, I'm just telling you what I've read about you. 150 films. Where is this guy now? What are you doing? And your fans would love to know. Oh, what am I doing? Um, Jesus, I'm having a good time. I kind of retire in a way, and uh, I live a very nice life. I have a hell of a home. I travel when I can. Uh, I still have family in Mexico. I go visit them, and uh, I travel around. Let's look back just a little bit. You have so many films. There's got to be one, looking back, if you were to go back to the future, one or two films, what would they be, and why would you like to do that film again? No, let me tell you why I tell you every movie, and let me tell you why. Because each time I read the script, and before I read the script, then I made a decision whether I do the movie or I didn't do the movie. So I made the movie. Now, that the movie was good, that the movie was bad, that didn't matter very much on me. It was not matter on editing, it was not matter on music, it was not matter on the director, it was not matter on many, many things, and of course, on the actors too. But I always made a decision. I liked them all. Let me ask you about how they do the business. Business has changed a lot. You were doing it during the days of film, obviously some, probably some digital before you got out of the business. How has the business changed? Has it gone too fast, too condensed, or, or what is it missing? What is Hollywood missing, do you think? I'll tell you what I think it's missing. Everything is computerized now. I saw the Three Musketeers, now they fly. This is the 15th century. They're fighting with their swords, and they're flying. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> little sense. Yeah, exactly. I don't like so much uh, computerized things. Most of your movies were done in Europe or Italy, if I understand right, and, in, and it seemed like you didn't want to leave or they didn't want you to leave. Tell me why it's different in Europe as opposed to here in Hollywood. Well, it was different. We're talking about different times. Mm -hmm. It was very nice when I made the movie with John Wayne here, when I made the movie with Charlton Heston, when I made the movie with all these guys here. It was great. And it was different. And there were no computers. There wasn't, it wasn't computerized, the whole thing. And in Europe, it was different. It was between the way we did it in Mexico and between the way they did it in Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Italian movies were, in a way, kind of in a Mexican style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it was fun. It was genuine. I had to talk in Italian. I learned Italian. It was very easy for me. It was very mm -hmm. easy for us to learn Italian mm -hmm. because it's very similar to Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I picked that up real fast. Who was your favorite actor or actress to, to play a role with in a movie? And just kind of recall for me why you took that, that movie or that particular scene. Because if I remember right, you always wanted to get the, the lady that had the... The, the lead in a movie, and you always wanted to be either lead or right behind them. I didn't understand the question. In other words, what was your, what was your, who was your favorite actress or actor to, to play with in a movie? And what movie uh, was uh, it? Talking me as an actor? Okay. Well, there were a lot of them. A lot of the male and female. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun to work with everybody. Do you have one favorite that stands out in your mind whenever you, you talk to some of your old friends and stuff and say... No, because everybody did his best. Mm -hmm. Once you're in a movie, you do your best, the best you can. Roll back just a little bit. How did you get interested in the movie business? There had to be a little story behind that. Oh, yeah. I, I, well, I watched uh, all the movies, and I, all of a sudden I wanted to become an actor myself. So I, I tried to become an actor. I was a friend in the University of Mexico, which I, I told him, hey, listen, I would like to become an actor. How can I do it? And he said, hey, listen, I know somebody who represents actors. I'll take you there. So she took me there. And at the time, there was, they were going to do a movie with El Santo. It was a wrestler guy who used to mask. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like Batman and Robin. Mm -hmm. Really? So I was going to, at the time, I was very young. And I played Robin, and he, he, of course, El Santo played Batman mm -hmm. with his mask and his cape and the whole thing. Jesus, that really put me in the map. What advice, you got advice, and who was your mentor, by the way, if you could, if you recall, the guy that gave you the best advice? In the... There was an actor called Jorge Rusek that worked a lot in American movies. Didn't do very big parts, but he was a great actor. And uh, he advised me a lot. I worked with him in the first, uh, my first Western. People getting into the movie business that are young now, Latino or otherwise, what advice would you have for them and what did you learn over the years that kind of stuck with you? What happens now is totally different, the ball game. 
Now you have computerized everything. Now they tell you, you see those lines? Stand over there. And the guy behind the camera is reading the lines. Now, when I went for a reading, this is before the computerized. There was the director, the assistant director, the producer, and an actor to give you the lines back. Big Seriously. difference. Mm -hmm. Big, difference. Big difference. And you had a small chat with the producer, maybe where you're from, and so on, and so on. And okay, let's do the scene. So it was a totally different ballgame. Mm -hmm. Then the guy behind the camera now, that tell you stand over there, and he's, you probably have to cry, and the guy's reading the lines and looking behind the camera, and he's reading the lines. I mean, how can you do it? So it's, let's change everything. Do you miss those days? In oh, when? yes, it was personal. Now it's very unpersonal. How so? Because, like I told you, just an example. Mm -hmm. What would you like your fans to know about you and, and, and how you appreciate it? Because fans really make her... Make or oh, break, absolutely. Uh, a movie the fans star. have been very, always very nice to me. It, it doesn't matter, for instance, when I went to Mexico recently in, at the airport, this yeah. is I'm talking about three months ago, at the airport, you never expect somebody from young guy from another generation, because I've been here 31 years. Mm -hmm. Probably the guy was 22. Yeah. And he was in Mexico when you want to pass the customs, you have to press a button. If it's red, they take a look at your bags, and if it's green, you pass by. Okay. So the guy was there, he said, are you Mr. Rivero? Yes. Oh, Mr. Rivero, I have all your movies. <laughs> oh, can I give you a hug? And, I mean... How does that make you feel? Very good, because he was another generation. Mm -hmm. exactly. Completely another generation. <laughs> Right. And uh, you've lived up here in the Hollywood Hills for how many years? And, and why did you pick this particular area? So you can still have, keep an eye on Hollywood? or Yeah, you can see it from my house real nice. I have a <laughs> hell of a view. Very good. Well, listen, uh, good talking to you and, and good luck to you in, the, in your retirement years now. Take Thank care. you very much. Thank you very have much. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. All of you. Thank you. Final comments for your fans in Spanish or English? Okay. Uh, I, les mando un abrazo. Muchas gracias por su cariño, por su amor y por todo lo que me han dado. Gracias. Great. Thank you again.